Ben Scuba again. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Um, thanks for joining us and tuning in. Today we've got Dive Right. Jared from Dive Right joining us and everything. Uh, we're going to bring him in a second here. You'll be able to see him. Um, so welcome to Wednesday with Dive Right in Scuba. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Nicole, thanks for joining us. Let's bring Jared in here with no more delay. Hey everybody, welcome. I'm Jared at Dive Right. Hey. How are you doing? Doing great. How's it going? Good. Thanks for uh, joining us today. Well, glad to be here. So we've got um, some cool stuff. Yeah. Um, today we're gonna give away thanks to you. So everybody that's watching, make sure you participate and and bring on your questions because Jared and Dive Right are giving away some really cool stuff today. Um, so at the end, when we do the randomizer, he's gonna be giving away a CX1 dive light, which is really cool, one of their newest lights, which I know he's gonna talk about in a little bit, yep. um, as well as we want to hear your feedback of what you like about your dive right products. And everybody that you know gives us their feedback of their dive right products, you're all gonna be entered into a drawing at the end of the show, and somebody's gonna win a dive right regulator, uh, which is the first stage, second stage, and a hose. So really cool setup. And uh, thanks for for giving uh, that those prizes away, Jared. Right, we're happy Pretty to. Cool. So. so yeah, I mean, let's get started here. Uh, we got a few people already saying hi. I think you can see all those yeah, comments. Seeing that, yeah, I see a familiar face there with Gail. Yeah, so yeah, let's go diving. Yeah, Gail. Gail is a diveaholic, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about you yourself, and then let's talk a little bit about the history of dive right. So fill us in a little bit about you and uh, and and who Jared Hires is. Okay, so um, I am the general manager at Dive Right, whatever that uh, is worth. Whatever that so means. My family actually started the company, so it's a little bit of nepotism while I'm here. But <laughs> at the same time, uh, I think I've uh, been here long enough that I know pretty much the ins and outs of everything. But Dive Right is an equipment manufacturer company um, based in Lake City, Florida, right in the heart of Cave Country. And it was started in 1984. So this year marks our 35th anniversary, which is crazy. Wow, that's awesome, huh? Pretty long time, really, in the scheme of diving companies. There's only, I think it's only the big guys like the, you know, scuba pros and the aqualungs that can really boast those numbers that are that long, but um, been around for a while. It was started because back then we didn't have any technical diving equipment and um, my dad Lamar hires and a friend of his Mark Leonard started the company because they basically were put out of a job they were both <laughs> cave instructors and we had a major flood that happened here and neither one of them could work and teach classes and they saw the need to produce cave diving specific equipment to actually sell to people because back then in the early 80s and the 70s, they were um, making their own equipment. Nobody actually made technical diving or cave diving equipment, things like reels and, and primary lights. So it seems they like were, so long ago, right? But you're only talking, what, 27 years ago? Yeah, basically, yeah, right, right then. So, I mean, I remember my dad was a manager for a local dive center. And what he would do basically is a guy would come into the shop and say, cool, look at these reels that I made in my garage this weekend to go cave diving with. And he'd go, cool, can you bring back 20 of them? I'm going to put them on the shelf and sell them. But those were the only people actually making technical or cave diving specific equipment. Wow. So, now you look fast forward to today. It's insane. Yeah, now, now there's 20 or 30 different manufacturers. There, you can buy the stuff online from you guys you know, and, and go cave diving. Yeah. But back then, there was nobody doing it. So in 84, they started the company to professionally make this equipment. And we started out, I think, with 13 products, um, two of them being um, dive lights, one of them being a the first commercially available back plate, stainless steel hard back plate, and the rest were diving weights. So Weights. Uh, and then now <laughs> we've, we've got to, you know, hundreds of products in all different categories. So we've really grown over the last 35 years. Yeah, that's really cool. That's a, a big difference, right? I mean, and so technically you guys have always been kind of designing everything in-house, you know what I mean? Uh, 
from back then even till now uh you guys have some cool products and projects you're working on right now yeah so of course you know we always try to hit it hard right before dema that's when most manufacturers try to release some of their cool new stuff so yeah, right awesome. before dema um or at dema we showed some new lights so we showed our new ex35 high powered light uh high powered cancer light we also showed our cx1 um handheld light we also were showing just some you know minor new um updates like we came out with some colored wings um not in yellow kasha we came out with um, <laughs> green and blue and red uh and pink so we have some colored wings to kind of give you know a little bit of variety to those people that want some color um and we've got some projects in the work which i'm not really sure how much i want to talk about but We've uh, we definitely are working on some stuff that to have a big year in 2019 with some new products. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, you guys seem to be growing and growing every year. You know what I mean? And and that's great to see. Um, and we it looks like we were getting quite a few comments. So uh, hi everybody. Yeah, and I see that Greg is asking about the green wings. I don't know if he saw it over my shoulder here, but I do have the OD green wings that we showed at DEMA. This is our Voyager wing, kind of going after those, you know, the guys that want a military type look to their gear. And uh, this has been really popular. Of course, we have a ton of veteran divers that have found that diving is a good way to overcome PTSD. So this is a little, you know, homage to those guys. So. Yeah, we've got a few of those guys that work here. And, and yeah, a lot of the military guys we deal with too, their love and that wing and that color. Anthony's also wondering what your opinion is of swivel adapters. So, um, you know, we don't use many swivel type adapters like, you know, the Omni swivel, you know, which they make a lot of good products and a lot of the other adapters that have the O-ring in the middle that is actually where you can move it around and it swivels full stem. Um, most of ours are all fixed O-rings like what a standard regulator hose is. So my personal opinion is on those are there's not really an extra failure point on those type of adapters because it's the same type of O-ring that you're using our regular hose. It's just one more. So, um, yeah, that's kind of my opinion on But take it for, you know, what it's worth. Yeah, right. Rick is wondering about dive computers. I know you guys, what, four years ago, I want to say, maybe now, got out of the dive computer game. You guys had some the NITEC and everything was a great line for, for quite a few years and, and you guys got out of it. So what are the plans uh, with computers? Going yeah, forward? so when we got out, we got out of dive computers with the NITEC Q, that was our last um, computer. And it was kind of a bittersweet thing for a lot of us here at Dive, right? Because we were um, one of the pioneers in dive computers. Um, we were the first company to come out with a user programmable Nitrox computer with our Bridge 2 in the early 90s. Uh, which was, you know, pretty big claim to fame. We were the first people to come out with a seven gas um, helium computer. So we really, um, you know, we led the way in computers for a long time. But as with anything, um, the diving computer market has grown. So some of the boutique dive computer only companies like Shearwater have come out and they've just dominated they're able to stay up with all the new trends and their only focus is doing computer design and they do it all in house. So of course, all of us are diving Shearwater computers. We love them. Uh, it's what we use on the Optima rebreather is Shearwater electronics. Um, so that's kind of now our go-to and we kind of, I think we're going to leave it to them for a little bit. We're not planning on entering that market anytime soon. We're going to leave it to the guys that can, can really put their all in on it. And they're running the show pretty well on the computer front, that's for sure, you know. So I, I definitely don't blame you. So, Rick, hopefully that answers your question. Craig is uh, wanting to learn more about side mount equipment and wondering what your thoughts are to somebody thinking about getting into it and new to, uh, you know, that style of diving and, and everything that it entails. And, and, Craig, I think it's important, but, sorry, Jared, to know what kind of diving you're going to do for one. But other than that, I'll let Jared kind of kind of fill in. For sure. I mean, and I, I don't want to keep tooting our own horn, um, but we were one of the pioneers on side mount equipment um, with our Nomad system being one of the first really off the shelf um, side mount systems that you could go and buy. Before then, in the early 90s, we were making side mount systems, but they were all custom. Um, you had to kind of take your own pieces and, and put it together to go dive. 
Um, I think it's a great tool for different types of diving. So a lot of people uh, find it as a very useful tool um, if they're trying to go kind of venture into that technical diving arena, needing to carry more gas because, of course, you know, with side mount, you're going to have more gas. You've got two tanks. Um, of course, you can put a smaller tank on there if you want, but most people have end up with more gas. So things like decompression come into play with that because if you have more gas, you can stay down longer. So you need to be ready for handling decompression. But um, a lot of people have found side mount as a good alternative to back mount diving. Um, it sometimes can be cheaper because you're not having to, to dedicate tanks to doubles only. Um, and it can be pretty versatile, especially if you're playing a travel a lot. You can, you can find tanks to make a side mount system uh, wherever you go. Yeah. And with our side mount systems, we have two different types. We have the Nomad XT, which is our bigger, um, more robust expedition side mount system. It's got right at uh, 50 pounds of lift, so it can handle the bigger steel tanks if you're diving a wetsuit or if you're diving up there where you guys are in Chicago and diving with a lot of weight with bigger uh, dry suits or with the dry suit undergarments, thicker dry suit undergarments. And then we have the Nomad LS, which is a side mount specific BC, really low profile, and it is more designed for diving with steel tanks, but in a dry suit without an extra amount of lead, you know, what we do around here in North Florida cave diving or diving with aluminum 80s and um, that type of uh, diving. All of our stuff, I mean, we're, we're divers here, so a lot of our thoughts are around steel tank diving in North Florida, and then we've adapted it to, to meet every environment. Yeah, cold water gloves and everything else that goes yeah. along with it, right? Sure. So just a reminder, looks like we got about 50 people tuned in right now. Um, so Dive Right is giving, you know, make sure you comment uh, and ask some questions here. They're giving away uh, the CX-1, one of their newest lights. Yeah, here, let me show you the CX-1. Yeah, if you got it. So make sure you ask some questions and you'll be entered into a drawing at the end. And then also, you know, if you've got some Dive Right, you right. There's the light. If you've got dive right gear already, though, we want to hear about it. And Jared is giving away a regulator set too to everybody that comments about their dive right gear. But anyway, Jared, go ahead, show that light off a little bit while you got it. Yeah, uh, this is the regulator as well. Yeah, that's the reg you're giving away. Yeah. So, so yeah, let's hear about how much you love your dive right gear. But yeah, you you know you've got the light there. Uh, yeah. So I, this is he, he was our CX1, which is our new handheld light. Yep. When we came out with this, we've had a lot of success with our BX2 light. I think you guys saw a bunch of them. We saw a ton of them um, all around the world for the um, the BX2, which is a simple twist on, twist off, 18650 um, handheld light. What we've done with that light is we made it compatible with our QRM system so you could use it as a, a real backup if your primary light failed to be able to easily pop into your existing hand mount. So we had a lot of success with that light and we had people buy, you know, using them like crazy. And this light, the CX-1, actually came from that thought, which was we're all using our BX-2s, we love it, but if I'm using it on a hand mount, I didn't necessarily like having to twist it on. I was using my BX-2 as a spotting light on my camera system. And I didn't like having to take the camera system and, and twist on the um, BX2 light. So we decided to put a push button on the back of it. So we took the CX1 and I, and I told the guys here, I said, I would like to have a BX2 with a push button. And they said, well, we can't just do that. We can't just take our light that we already have out there and just put a push button on the back of it. We have to do something different, which is kind of how we like to do things around. Oh, we might've lost you here, Jared. Maybe you'll come back here in a second. So the CX-1 has the 26650 battery in it, which gives it a longer burn time. But because it's a direct drive type battery or light, it actually gives it a more intense light for a longer period of time. So I think it's, it's got a lot of power in a small package, that's for sure. Sure. Yeah, this is a perfect light for um, open water divers, for wreck divers are doing some light wreck penetration and also for if you're taking a cavern course we have a lot of guys that for cavern only type diving will use this 
And, of course, it does make a good backup play. You know, and it clips pretty easily into your helmet too, right? Definitely. So we have a full range of accessories time. for this. So with uh, You can use the QRM, and it can also – we have a hand mount specific for the CX-1. That's a good low-end hand mount. Yeah, speaking of the brightness, you know, Mike Benoit was saying he's got the EX-35, uh, two of them. He and his buddy Chris Reed. His buddy Chris Reed almost blinded him at Ginny. <laughs> it's so bright. Yeah, no, it, it kicks ass, man. It's our brightest um, light that we've ever – produce with a tight beam it's like a laser in the water so it's the perfect light for for guys that are wanting a light that can punch from one side of a, of a cave to another or one side of the wreck to the other yeah it just cuts right through it steve is uh is wondering he says he's got three of the hids and he used to have an option for upgrading from hid to led do you still have that available or are you planning on bringing that program back so we will if you have a HID light. Uh, we do some trade-in programs on them occasionally to upgrade to a new light. Um, unfortunately, because if it's either a HID that has a reflector that moves, so if it's one of the H10s or H24s or any of our, our lights that had an um, adjustable focus reflector, we do not have the ability to upgrade those to a lit, uh, LED technology but we do have the ability to upgrade some of the fixed focus, the MR11 so, um, styles to a um, LED. So you can always just shoot us a, an email at support at diverite.com and we can get you squared away on that. Yeah, get squared away. Lindsay really likes your sliding D-rings. She uh, likes them so much, she mentioned it three times. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are pretty much kick ass. We got a lot of guys that, um, have tried multiple different sliding D rings out there, and they, they seem to be basic enough that they don't, you know, that people have a easy time using them. Some of the other ones are a little bit too complicated. You got to pull them in one direction first, and then pull them back. This is is pretty basic, and I love it. That's why I dive. Whenever I go to Mexico, I primarily dive with uh, aluminum tanks um, side mount down there, and of course, that's you got to have the sliding D rings because. You got to stay in perfect trim. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All the time, right? Somebody the may time. be taking a picture of you. You can't be yeah, there. Exactly. Yeah, so you see you take some GoPro video, and then you'll be famous <laughs> on the Internet if you don't <laughs> keep it in so. We should do that next time you come up. Just do some horrible B-roll outtake footage and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, John is wondering if you got any upgrades or, or new additions or features coming for the, uh, the Optimum. Yeah, so I guess it was a year and a half ago we released out the big change to the Optima when we went to using the IBOV for our BOV, ADV, manual addition valve, all in one solution, and we went to our new back mounted counter lungs. Um, since then, we're, we always are working on something, always working on something. So we do have a little, a couple of small things in the works that hopefully will be releasing by DEMA, but... Um, but the iBob integration was our, our real big announcement that we did a year and a half ago. So we've been kind of riding that and making sure that we can get those out to the, uh, to the masses. Get them out there, yep. Hey, Nick, thanks for tuning in. We like doing these too and, and having great guests like Jared and everybody else that's come before him. So uh, we're glad you guys are watching. You know, it's, uh, we do this for you, not for us. I definitely don't like being in front of the camera. You may think otherwise, but. You love being on camera. <laughs> don't be telling you guys. You know, as the owner, sometimes you just got to do what's got to get done, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, so here we are and uh, and doing fun stuff. You know, it is, it is enjoyable hanging out, talking with you and, and interacting with obviously all of our customers and new and future and all that. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. Definitely appreciate all you guys. This is why we do all this stuff. Doug is saying the best thing about your products is you guys dive it all, which is true. You we know, uh, from of course, the Doug might be a little bit biased since he was a old uh, rebreather student of mine, but. <laughs> we were out there diving. So, yeah, I mean, the big thing about our company is we are a company of divers. I think with our front staff people that dive, we've got about 12 of us in the company here based in Lake City, Florida, that are actively diving every week. Some of these guys go every other um, day, it seems, to the dive sites. One of the perks that we do is our, as um, you know, that our, all of our employees get is a season pass at the local um, diving spot, Jenny Springs. Oh, awesome. here. So 
we encourage everybody to go out and dive because that's the only way you're going to actually innovate. So absolutely. Yeah. You got to find out what's broken. So you know what to fix. Right. Exactly. So and we try to, and with that, I also try to dive multiple different types of gear and equipment. Yeah. Try so everything. Get, get stuck on just diving side mount or just diving my rebreather. So I always still throw on doubles. We still go on single tank type trips because you got to be able to be versed in all of it. No, that's true. Good point. Bob uh, is loving the, the the Nomad and wondering if you have any plans for any colors with that. He uh, he <laughs> likes uh, he loves the dive rig, but he he likes some colors that some other manufacturers are are throwing out there. Yeah, for sure. That's definitely something that we're looking at, and a lot of that has come down to: Are we willing to sacrifice something else to be able to give colors? So our super fabric material, which I think we're pretty well known for now, we've been doing that for. About 10 years. Um, we use that on all of our nomads, which is a, a basically a reinforced armored wing. It's an armored material. So that material is very hard to come by in colors because what it is, uh, they take a piece of Cordura and they actually print, like almost like a 3D printer, print little um, polyurethane beads on it that help protect it from being abraded. When it's, you know, you go in a wreck or you go in a cave. And um, so we haven't decided if we want to sacrifice the ability to do super fabric and then go to like a standard Cordura, which would give us colors. We think that probably most of our customers would rather have the um, more abrasion resistant type material than going for the colors. But yeah, no, that makes you guys, sense. If you guys just want colors, we can do that too. Yeah, Bob, what say you? I got some green spray paint. Let's get <laughs> let's lime that thing up a little bit for you, huh? Lindsay's wondering about shorter loop hoses. Do you guys have uh, have that available or, or coming in the pipeline? We actually are looking at something um, for shorter loop hoses and actually something to be able to keep uh, a multitude of stock of different loop hoses. Right now we do have we have um, have them that go from like 10 to 15, but nothing in between. So we're thinking about bringing in some more custom fit that way because Lindsay's a, a petite woman, so she uh, definitely could benefit from shorter loop hoses, I know. Yeah, Great you can't take scissors well. and cut it. Yeah. Uh, I see all these people wanting these blue fins, man. They're all over the comment section wanting <laughs> blue fins. I think there's a movement out there for you guys to carry some blue fins. I don't know. We're going to blame it all on Tracy Bomber and Chris Lowe there. At your shop, so yeah, I don't, I don't blame you. Yeah, I mean, I told Chris if he wants blue fins, I'm gonna make him blue fins, but they're gonna have an orange stripe down the middle. I'm not gonna do any UK blue just for him. <laughs> he said he's got some paint. Oh yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> All right, Philip is wondering about a wireless mod for the dive computer. Philip, they don't make that dive computer. Shearwater does, and Shearwater with their AI, their Nerd, and their Taric, they do have a wireless transmitter for that. So, good question, Nicole. Yeah, that light is. Uh, it's pretty awesome that we were showing. I can't say uh, your words that you put in there because Google, or Facebook does censor some of that stuff if I curse on <laughs> Facebook Live. I realized that after uh, after a couple other shows. So I'll let you say it, not me. Um, Jaxi is wondering, they don't have any of your gear yet, but wanting to get something new. Jaxi, it probably depends on what you have. But, Jared, what do you think is a good uh, thing to get first, the reg set or the BCD? Well, yeah, you know, when – we always had this discussion, you know, when I was really teaching open water classes, you would have your students that would ask you what what do you um what do you think is the first equipment purchase you should buy? And I of course think that your mask and fins should be your first equipment purchase, um, because your mask especially is so personal. But then after that I, I think I would probably go for a BC. You know, a reg definitely is second, but um a BC really makes a difference on whether or not you're comfortable on a dive or not. A regulator can do that as well, especially if you have a rental one that's not up to snuff and you're used to breathing mm -hmm. off of a you know higher end regulator. But um, I don't know. I think it's a toss up. But I probably would go BC personally first. Yeah, it is, you know that affects your buoyancy, your trim, just a lot of comfort in the water too. And, and that even that comfort helps with your breathing and everything too. So no, I, I agree with that. Yeah. I know about, you know, <laughs> It is important to have your own gear and just be and being comfortable with it. My, me and my wife went to Thailand earlier last year, and we we're going on a non-diving vacation. We try to do one non-diving vacation a year, 
because I am grateful enough to, or, you know, thankful enough I can go on a ton of diving vacations throughout <laughs> the year. So we always go on one non-work related um, trip. And in um, Thailand, we decided to go ahead and dive um, one day. And I had to put on some really crappy rental gear with a, you know, jacket BC. There's a picture of me floating around there, a jacket BC with a, with an old school um, um, bad rental rag. But uh, <laughs> it's, it made me appreciate my stuff so much more. Oh, absolutely. 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 Uh, speaking of your wife, how is she doing? She's doing good. So I'm expecting a baby here soon. So yeah, congratulations. She's probably on here watching because you know she has to to uh, to spy on me every time I'm doing something. But. Yeah, baby watch. So if you're out there, hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John is wondering if that light is compatible with the QRM, which it is, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Scott likes the uh, or has read that the blackface SPGs are are better for your eyes to adjust. And notice you guys don't make one. Uh, what are your yeah. thoughts about that? So, you know, I don't really have a comment on that. Um, I haven't really, I've tried them before. I've, you know, tried ours. I don't really have a preference uh, between the two. Uh, one thing that we have done specifically on our, on our regs that we've tried, our, our SPGs, is we've tried to take out the big red, um, you know, 500 PSI or 750 PSI mark. A lot of people sent, um, have a hard time reading their their red needle when it falls into that red section on a lot of other pressure gauges, which most of your recreational brand companies tend to do um, that because they, they think that they need to for recreational divers. But um, we, we do try to keep it as a plain white face with black numbers. But um, I don't know. I, I personally dive in those in the cave. I love to just be able to throw my light on it, get a, a good glow and then be able to pull it up and, and read it without a problem. I think that the black ones where they shine are where they're really maybe better is if you're literally shining your light directly on it and trying to read it at the same time. So some of it just comes down to technique. Yeah, I think there's two camps on it, right? You like it, you don't like it. Exactly. They both work great, though. That's Whatever you want to do. Yeah, Gil loves her uh, her lights and the tight beams on them. Uh, Cody's got a couple uh, cancer lights, no man. Uh, Golly, I don't know if we should even read all this stuff here. Glad, glad you guys love everything going on. Sean's wondering what the output is on the CX-1. CX-1, so it uses a, um, a Cree XML U2, or actually a U4, a higher bin um, uh, output um, chip on it. So it's right at 1,000 lumens is what that chip is rated for. Um, the big thing with a lot of these types of lights that use like a regular 18650 is that you'll get that higher output for a short time and then it starts to taper off. They're all a direct drive type light. So one thing that we did with the CX-1 by using that bigger, higher capacity, the 5200 milliamp hour um, 26650 battery is it does have a, a higher output. Um, for a longer period of time. It doesn't taper off like one of the 18650 batteries do. The other thing about this CX-1 is it does have modes. So I don't know if I touched on that before. Um, we have the ability to where you can crank it down and you can get uh, more burn time off of it depending on what you're diving. Um, I was using one just teaching this last week where I just had kind of had it on low the whole entire time and just burning for four days straight. <laughs> so it'll it'll keep going, but it has five modes on it that vary from a thousand lumens down to fifty lumens. So that's awesome. Yeah. All right, Philip is uh, looking for a scuba set for personal use. Wondering what your middle of the road options are, and, and I know you've got a lot of really good packages set up with uh, Transplay Trans Packs as well as the Red Pack Reg packages. But what would you suggest for them? Yeah. So I mean. It depends on what type of diving you're doing. Of course, a lot of these, I'm, I know a lot of the people on uh, this Facebook Live right now are uh, technical type divers. So, you know, if you're really looking for something that will give you good comfort, good fill in the water, but you are trying to ball on a budget, then maybe going for a, like a back plate with a basic harness. Um, I mean, you can't get much, um, probably lower end than that, but also still that's what you're, the, most of us tech divers that spend thousands of dollars on dive equipment go for it. It's a, it's a good price, um, you know, piece of equipment, but it'll still give you comfort and give you, make you look good in the water. 
Yeah, Phil, well, if you have some specific questions, feel free to call us too so we can see where you're diving, how you're diving, and really get some good recommendations. But sorry to cut you off, Jared. Go ahead. No, no, for sure. But what you were saying about the regulator packages too, that's something that we really have strived to do is we've uh, put together these kind of what we would think is an ideal reg package. Of course, you know, part of a, a regulator set is, especially technical diving, we all like to fine tune things. So they, um, you know, they might not be your ideal, but they're what we think is a pretty good setup. But we have those at a very reasonable price when you oh, think yeah. about regs. I know that you sell all the way up to the really high end ones and, and the really budget regs. Ours come in really on the low end side of the price range but they give the same performance as some of those really high end, you know, thousand dollars for a first and second only regs. Absolutely. And you can spend less than a thousand dollars and get a full reg set with everything you need to go diving. Yeah, no, absolutely. And yes, Tracy, I did just say ball on a budget because you can ball on a budget. So. <laughs> Nick is saying he loves direct customer service. You guys really stand behind your products. Is that easier to do because you make almost everything here in the U.S.? I mean, is that is because yeah. you guys have such tight control when you're making it and, and from the design phase all the way through, do you think that allows yeah, you to have that better? Plays it plays a part on it. It, it, because we're completely involved in the design phase, uh, we are designing it, we are producing it here in the U.S., it definitely helps. And it's also because we know that it works. Because like I talked about earlier, we, we dive so if you call up and, and, and have a concern about something, then we're like, hey, I need to take off early so I can go diving to see if I can replicate this issue. Because we do take it serious and we, you know, we actually dive. So we stand behind our products because we were just 3,000 plus feet back in a cave with that same product a day ago. So we, um, we definitely stand behind them because we know that they're, they're quality. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, Matt is wondering if you uh, have batteries from either an LS25 or HP50, are they compatible with the new EX35 head? Yes. So if you have the lithium batteries that have the three prongs with the one ground um, or three pauses, one negative, those are compatible with the, the um, EX35. Yeah, you can just get the head and, and call it a day. Jack, I do recommend, we, we recommend on the EX35, though, that you stick with a um, expedition size canister, so the little bit bigger um, battery pack. It does work on the smaller battery pack. That's why I actually dive, have been diving at home myself. But um, if you really want to get the more burn time, then you need the bigger battery pack. Yeah, I can imagine. That thing's got to eat up some uh, some power and some battery juice there. Jack's yeah. wondering what the beam angle for the CX-1 is. The CX-1 is a right at around a six degree beam angle. Yeah, it's the same tight. beam or the same actual reflector that we use in the LX-20 and even the EX-35. So. Lindsay, is, uh, does the lights clip get in the way of the on-off button, the little push button on the back? So it can. Or I Actually, I wouldn't say it does, but if you literally put it right in front of the battery or in front of the button, it can. But if you can look at that, it's offset. So I have mine on a piece of bungee with a clip here, and it stays pretty well out of the way when I'm turning it on and off. So. And if you're using the QRM mount, it's definitely completely out of the way, too. So yeah, exactly. it depends on how you're using it. Yeah. Robert literally has no dive gear right now and is wanting to learn more before purchasing, and he's mainly, uh, mainly doing cold blackwater diving right now, and he's wondering what recommendations you might have. Um, Robert, feel free to give us a call. I know we touched on that a little bit. It's really going to depend a lot on, you know, what you're diving and exactly where. But other than that, you know, we, we did talk about possibly a backplate and wing or BCD for the first choice over a regulator. But, Jared, did you have anything else for, for Robert? Basically what you just said, I mean, it's very common that the um, cold water divers tend to, to go towards that backplate just because it's, you know, five and a half to six pounds that they can cut off of their waist their waist of a, you know, either weight pockets or a weight belt. So if you're constantly diving cold water um, and needing weight to go with a thick wetsuit or, you know, thick dry suit undergarments, then I definitely would maybe, you know, look at a back plate and test dive a back plate um, to see if that would be the direction you want to go in. So, more, so much more comfortable too, that's for sure. I know once I tried one many years ago, I was just hooked. You know, you yeah. didn't go back to a BCD at all. Definitely. Uh, Marcus has the uh, 
the SMB in orange and wonder if you're going to make one in yellow. Yeah, we used to make um, SMBs and our lift bags in yellow. And it's kind of, um, as we've done over the years, we, we phase out products that aren't really selling. And we weren't selling a lot of yellow. Um, if we had a big demand and somebody wanted to you know, bring back yellow and stock, then we maybe could look at it. But we tend to, to find that we sell probably 10 to 1 orange to yellow. And it just wasn't worth bringing those in and stocking. Yeah, there's big minimum orders for all that stuff. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah, the um, mainly is that material that you have to bring in. So in bulk. Yeah, Bob is wondering, do you have any of those sliding D rings near you? He's wondering how uh, if you could show how that worked. I don't have one around here, but I probably could get somebody to go grab one for me if I need. Bob, to. we'll see if we can't dig one up yeah. for a little bit later. Uh, yeah. Todd is is thinking about getting a CCR wing. Wonder if you can give some info on your CCR wing. Yeah, so the CCR wing, um, which is very popular on, on other brands of rebreathers besides the Optima. I know that probably Gail and some of these guys that dive kisses, maybe Chris that dives a kiss can chime in on that. But the the CCR wing, we specifically designed it to be wider in the middle middle of the wing of the um, center section of the wing, so it can go on the outside of a CCR. And you know, CCR tends to be a little bit wider, even than a set of doubles, um, or just slightly wider than a set of doubles. So the wings lift is on the outside, so it doesn't get you know restricted at all. And and uh, I got somebody getting some sliding D-rings for you. <laughs> there we go. Um, but um, so that's the, the CCR wing is really good because of that. The other thing that we've done on the CCR wing is you can buy it with a trim pillow in the bottom of it. So I know that a lot of issues that issues that rebreather divers um, get into with their trim is because of those counter lungs on your shoulders and they throw off your normal trim that you're used to. And a lot of us can overcome that when they're diving a uh, dry suit. You just put a little bit of air in your, in your feet. But when you are diving maybe in the Caribbean or somewhere in a three mil and you don't have a lot of neoprene on your legs, your legs tend to drop. So we have that trim pillow that can be installed in the CCR wing to offset that, which is really a lifesaver if you're if you're really trying to stay in perfect trim. <laughs> yeah, it helps level you back out there. Nicole must be looking for some regs. Good choice, Nicole, but she's wondering what the warranty program that you guys offer on your regs is. So we um, we offer, you know, of course, a, a standard one-year um, warranty on actual defects. Of course, anybody that's dealt with the dive right warranty department knows that we tend to honor things from 10 years ago uh, on a regular basis. Um, and we, we always try to keep parts for our older regs, our older products. Um, our actual regs, we recommend that they're serviced every two years or 100 um, hours, which is a little bit more than some other brands, I think, go every year. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we, we say to keep, your, keep them up. We don't do like parts for life or anything, any of those other gimmicks on, on regs because uh, our feedback from a lot of technicians and shops is that it's almost hard to actually manage those programs. But instead, we try to keep our regs at a lower price to offset that, and we keep our parts kits at a ridiculously low price Yeah, uh, sure. as well. Yeah, absolutely. Brian is uh, thinking about side mount and wondering if we have complete side mount kits with reg straps, et cetera, which we do. We got them online, uh, Brian, and, and I think we talked about the packages you guys offer, and, and you guys do have quite a few packages, which makes it really easy for people to get into. So, Brian, feel free to reach out to us. We can help you, you know, get into one of those or, or steer you the right way with the Nomad uh, and the regs that you need, but they are all on there, and and, you know, Jared, do you have anything to add to that for, for Brian? Um, no, I mean, you, you hit on the on the head. So we tried to – we have these ready-to-dive side mount regulator packages. Our side mount um, DCs, when they come to you, we try to give you as much of the accessories and all that you need. I think the only thing missing when you buy a, a Nomad, if you were to buy a Nomad and a reg set, would be um, whatever hardware you need to put on your tanks. So Yeah. Now, we've had some really cold weather here. We're in Illinois. You're in Florida. Yeah. And uh, Mark is wondering for cold water diving if he needs the ice kit for his uh, RG-1208. What, what do you recommend? So, yeah, if you're doing really cold water diving on those um, the 1208 first stage, I probably would go with an environmental kit. Um, that's what they're designed for. Um, all of our 
our current XT1 racks have a um, environmental kit on them. So our XT and our um, our FT racks. And most of the 1208s that we sold had ice kits or the environmental kits installed on them as well. So. Keith Wells is wondering if you have any plans on a new reel. I know you guys have recently come out with some, but he's just curious if you're if you're looking at a new reel or any improvements with the reels. So we're always looking at improvements that we can do. Um, we came out with the slide lock series reels about two, I guess two years ago, two demos ago, and they have been really a kick-ass reel for us. And um, I know that when you had, I know you had John um, chattered in on a couple weeks ago. That's his reel of choice. I think he makes everybody buy one for his, <laughs> his uh, classes, which we of course love. But um, really, that's our our main focus right now is our slide lock reel. So it's a, it's probably one of our best selling uh, uh, rigs. That's for sure. Uh, Nicole thinks that all fifty four people or whatever that are viewing should get free blue fins. Just letting you know. So I, I think this blue, um, yeah, blue sure is going to take a walk through of this. So. Yeah, we might have to block that on on social media from becoming a thing, huh? Exactly. Um, any plans on full face masks? Um, you know, I think kind of like uh, Shearwater and these other guys that specialize in in um, rags. I think the guys like OTS and Ocean Reef that do nothing but full face masks. I think that I'll leave it to them. I think they've got it under control. Lindsay wondering, and I think that's a good idea, right? I mean, these guys specialize in that with the communications and the comms and everything. It's sometimes it's not worth getting into these other other realms. Sure. Um, Lindsay's wondering about a bar PSI gauge. A bar PSI combo gauge. Um, yeah. Yeah. I really, I've only recently gotten some requests for that. Um, it's not hard to do, uh, so we could possibly put that into the line um, going forward. Um, I would really kind of like to hear what everybody's thoughts on that are. You know, you know, you know, if that's something that would be well received or needed. So, yeah, um, some off that. In the I think we're just trying to take over the world, and they should all use PSI personally. But that's a different story as well. <laughs> and that's for sure. Now, Bob is saying thank you for all your support of the NSSCDS uh, conference over the years. I know you guys do a lot for conservation and everything down there. Uh, did you want to expand on any of your efforts and, and donations and things you guys got going on? Don't want to toot our own horn, but we definitely are our big sponsors of the NSS CDS. It's a um, close to our company's heart because um, Lamar and my dad was, of course, the uh, training chairman and uh, chairman of that organization for many years and is uh, still an active instructor through them. So. We always try to support them as much as we can, and we always try to give back to our cave diving community since we are a part of it. So we try to give back as much as we can. Yeah, absolutely. Mark is trying to get into double tanks, and not sure if he wants to do side mount or back mount. If he got the Nomad XT, could that wing be used on a back plate for doubles? Yeah, so the Nomad XT, the nice thing about um, that system is that it is our, our do-all type system. It can do anything from a single tank the doubles to side mount. So that would be a, a good option. Uh, I know a lot of guys that, that use it um, in all different versions. I've used it in all different types of diving. So that could be an option. Um, and what I would really suggest for guys that are, if you're really thinking about that, is find your instructor that you would like to do intro to tech or any of these, these entry level tech classes with and get their opinion. You know, what type of diving are you doing? If you're diving mostly in the quarries up there around you, then side mount's great for that because it's easy entry, um, you know, walking in. If you're diving off the of boats and you're expected to climb up the ladder every single time you go diving, then doubles might be a better fit for you. Um, you know, really talk to an instructor and see what, you know, your diving goals are and go from there. Yeah, and just adapt it from there. Um, Josh is wondering if you have a lot of complaints with the EPDM hose retainers breaking. He uh, he seems to go through quite a few and is just wondering. No, um, that actually is interesting to hear. Um, we that don't have any issues either at all. Um, they tend to to last pretty good. I've got some that are pretty darn old. Of course, like anything that's rubber, if you get a small nick in them um, somehow, some way, then uh, they will. Yeah, you know, that nick will turn into a tear. 
Yeah, but, Josh, uh, if you got those from us, feel free to email me and we'll get with Jared to get you some replacements yeah, for sure. Yeah. Carlos asked him about the new Optima. Yeah, I think we, we covered that earlier. The um, the new iBob system um, on the Optima with the back mount kind of ones is, is really awesome. Um, still so you getting a lot of feedback from that already. I know it's still fairly yeah. new, but uh, what what's the word on the street coming in from everybody? That's oh, all the streets was great. I mean, we've been getting, uh, yeah, still have a lot of guys that have upgraded their old units. So one of the things that we've done with the Optima is we made it. Um, backwards compatible on almost everything. We have guys that have upgraded their units that they originally bought in 2005 and have they are almost a completely different unit now, but they've kept the same base unit since, awesome. since then. So we had a lot of guys that upgraded as soon as it came out, and we've had nothing but um, good feedback from it. I see a couple of those guys that have gotten that upgrade in the forum um, with Lindsay being one of them and Paul right there talking. So, uh, you know, they can maybe chime in too to see if how they like their um, iBob upgrades and uh, their Optimus. Yeah, can't beat that. Um, can locals stop in a dive rate to look at product? Yeah, you know, can they get a quick tour? Can we, they we get tours all the time. Yeah. So, yeah, just don't come in at 4 o'clock on Friday because you might get a, a stampede hitting it on the – as we come out the door yeah right we're all ready, we're all ready to go diving so <laughs> otherwise we're here matt is also wondering what sets your wings apart from halcyon yeah their halcyon is a great company that's only i don't know maybe 25 minutes away from here um know all the guys over there well are you know quite a bit they make an awesome wing um i'd have to really you know, say what is that you know wing are you looking at because um, they're all a little bit different and we put a lot of thought into how we shape them and and the application that we're using them for so they're you know they all have a little bit of differences craig is wondering uh he wants your fins but wondering what size he needs um as it's not listed uh, on our website for shoe size uh, we'll look into getting that fixed craig without knowing what size you wear it's kind of hard to recommend it but jared what's the uh the quick range real quick uh, with your fit? yeah quick range is um for like and also of course everything depends on the type of sole of the boot that you're wearing but our size large fits most guys that are between like a 10 and a 12 depending on what type of boot you're wearing um the xl is for you know a 12 and up and especially if you have a, a rock boot or like a thicker sole boot on medium is for like a, a male a men's eight to ten and then small is for the the you know smaller foot sizes so like you know a women's six type thing six and seven yeah and we'll check our website if that's not there we'll get that updated i thought we had that in the side chart, but it will be in about 10 minutes that's for sure um anthony is wondering if you guys are going to be at beneath the sea which is one of the few dive shows we have coming up for everybody out there, we've got our world underwater coming up this next weekend, not in a couple days, the following one. Um, and uh, and BTS is uh, about a month, month and a half later. Um, are you guys going to BTS? Yeah, this year we're not going to be at BTS, um, but I know that you guys will have a big representation of our product. So uh, I'm sure that anybody can stop by and see you um, to, to see some of our product. We will be at Boston Sea Rovers, uh, which is coming up here soon. And also the DC dive show, which is coming up here soon. Um, so catch us at one of those if you're closer to one of those areas. And then we'll also be doing the San Francisco show and the Long Beach show on the West Coast. Well, you'll definitely be missed at BTS. So for anybody that comes up to me at BTS, we'll do a selfie. We'll send it to Jared yep. on Facebook. Tag him in it that he's not there, and you'll get a special uh, a special prize for doing that with me. So yeah, <laughs> feel free to do that. We'll just keep harassing him all weekend, making him feel uh, feel bad that he's not there. I know you guys got a lot of shows. I know it's not easy to get to them all, so you got to spread it yeah, out. Make sure you go and um, and take Terry and Chris some tequila shots. I love them. So. You, you know, I know you guys have some stories um, with with drinking with them late night after these shows, right. and they are definitely going to miss you. Um, and I was even planning on staying later to have those tequila shots with you. So we'll see. We'll have to make it up some other time. I'm sure that we'll have plenty of opportunities. Yeah, that's 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 the case. <laughs> um, let's see as we keep going. Uh, Andrew said after a couple of hiccups, the mods are in good. Who's the guy in the blue in the corner? Is that uh, Carlos? Are you talking to me? I don't think there's anybody behind Jared, but uh, let's see. Which shoulder does this? 
this guy over my shoulder right here, it looks like. That is Augie. Augie's one of the sales guys here. Uh, he's actually also manning that computer right now because he's going to be doing the randomizer, which tells us who wins these prizes at the end. So good question, but that is Augie. And way to sneak in there so you get a chance to win that light. Good job. Um, let's see as we keep scrolling up. We've had a lot of questions. Wow, 139 comments so far. I think that might be a, a record so far. So again, thank you all for tuning in as we keep scrolling through these. Don't mind me as I'm reading um, we experienced some MAV failures on the iBob and sent them back to Divesoft. They did make some changes on the internal pistons learning if running issues in the future. So, of course, like anything, there can always be some odd changes, but that's a good thing about having a good manufacturer dive shop to back you up and take care of it, which you guys are, are really well known for doing for everybody. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Matt is trying to get away from a jacket BCD and wondering about a recommendation for a wing set. He's around 240 pounds, wears a five mil uh, in the springs there in central Florida. And uh, with the jacket, he's using about 20 pounds of lead. So you will drop a lot of that, Matt. But what what system do you recommend? Probably a trans pack? Yeah, I would recommend a trans pack. So I don't think that a hard back plate is for everybody. If you're not planning on doing really cold water diving or if you plan on traveling a lot, the trans pack is awesome. Uh, that's why a lot of our guys here dive even on their doubles um, rigs because they, they like the comfort of it a little bit more. And it's probably the easiest transition from a jacket DC to something like that. You will cut out lead or cut out weight, uh, mainly because the jacket BCs, they have an internal plastic um, back plate in them that adds some buoyancy and just their, their size in general adds buoyancy. So a lot of people I see, if you go from diving a jacket BC to like our trans pack and Voyager wing setup, which would be a good a starting set for you, um, you probably will cut out, you know, four or five pounds um, just by doing that. Um, but yeah, I think the trans pack and probably our Voyager wing would be a good fit for you. Yeah. So Josh is wondering why is Dive Rides customer service the best in the business? <laughs> We just try to be, man. That's all we do is uh, focus on customer service. And you know, it's one thing in today's world that that the easy stuff, right? Like you guys do it right. People think we do it right. We're not doing anything. We're not superheroes, right? You just give people how it's supposed to be. And it's crazy how many companies in all industries miss that mark. You know, they just they can't do the basic stuff, and it makes other companies look like all stars when you're just you're just doing it the right way. For sure. Big thing that we try to do is we do answer our phone here. Uh, we don't put you through a circle jerk. It's something that we try to we try to to keep that way. But if you call up here, you'll get one of our sales people, one of our customer service uh, people on the phone that is a diver. Um, they'll probably hate me for saying this on Facebook Live, so a lot of people will start calling them next week. But we, if you call us, we will be on the phone to talk to you, and we can work through anything we do. Um, I know a lot of people use our um videos online to figure out a lot of stuff you know we try to, to keep it to where you don't have to call us where you can figure it out yourself online uh, we're working on doing more of those videos this year i know that those are always a big uh, favorite of everybody yeah but we just we just try to to treat people like we would want to be treated the way it should be tracy was clarifying she uh, she is wondering who i am tracy i am mike peterson uh the guy hosting this uh this show this facebook live you're on my page um <laughs> <laughs> I'm the owner here at Dive Right in Scuba, so I'm the, the guy in blue over Jared's shoulders. So I apologize. I kind of thought you were just talking to me and talking about uh, Augie over there. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Mike Peterson, the owner of uh, Dive Right in Scuba. Thanks for tuning in. Um, Matt, and while we are talking, while you're giving everybody the, the spiel about you being the owner of Dive Right in Scuba, why did you steal our name, man? <laughs> well... <laughs> Technically, we didn't, you know, so 12 years ago when we started, uh, my father was doing his instructor class and not happy with the shop he was at. And and one of the gals in his class, Pam, um, you know, she had already kind of had a dive shop picked out, a name and a logo. And as they were talking and they didn't like the shop they were at, they just kind of evolved into talking about a dive shop. And she said, hey, I can I can bring this to the table. And and that is where the dive right in scuba logo and name came from so pam probably doesn't get a lot of credit from anybody out there but it was never intentional to steal it and, uh, and by the way well, I'll, take your, I'll take your word for it i'll take your word for it i'm <laughs> sure 
that I know we get calls for you guys off, and I'm sure you guys get calls uh, for people getting us mixed up and things like that. One of probably the best phone calls we've received, I don't know which one yours is, is um, I don't know, Chris, what was that maybe two years ago? We got a call that our van was driving erratically down the road yeah. in Florida. <laughs> even as we're here in Illinois, I know, and we didn't even have a van that said dive right on it. I know that wasn't us. So was that you? No, that was not me. That was Jefferson that in, in the back that uh, our product manager that he bought our old van, and he's a bad driver. Straight up, he's a bad <laughs> driver. So, so, it. so it was probably a warranted phone call. I told him after we got that phone call that I was going to make him scrape the old dive right lettering off of that van if he uh, didn't start driving a little bit better. But, See, that's when you just put another manufacturer's name on it, right? Exactly. <laughs> I think we just changed it to dive right in scuba. There you go. Crazy. Yeah. Hey, whatever. I'll take any advertising we can get, yeah. right? Um, Max is wondering how we can bribe Augie. Uh, Max, it probably depends on what you're looking for, but Augie, uh, what can we bribe you with? Bacon, uh, bacon and bourbon. Bacon and bourbon. Yeah, I like, he's a man after my own heart. I like, I can do <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think that's the way to almost anybody's heart. Um, Augie, Steve says since you're picking the winner, don't forget that time he lent you his tank. Oh, I remember Steve. Steve, you're good. He he, uh, he remembers. Um, do you guys offer any so, uh, courses for servicing your own regulators for for the lay person that wants to kind of take care of their own regs? So we uh, we can. Uh, we don't. We offer courses at all of our our um, you know trade shows that we go to. So even our consumer trade shows, we are running courses for our um, dealers in the area. Um, but we also, if you're think you're capable enough and are willing to service your own regs, uh, you're more than welcome. We do recommend, though, that really that regs do go to somebody that has the proper tools. Not to say that anybody can, um, can't can service their own regs, but things like a proper service bench and the proper tools are really needed. So we, we tend to not do many individual reg clinics just because you probably don't want to invest the money into the tools to just service your regs every two years it's probably better to let a professional do it. So. It gets expensive. And we've taught a lot of those classes uh, with a couple of the manufacturers that do allow that. And I'll be honest, the biggest thing that we've seen is most people, even after taking that class, they still send us the regs because that first year they may do it. Second year they may try to do it, but they forgot so much because they didn't service them for a year, you know, and they don't have that consistency of getting it right. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's good knowledge to learn some of that stuff, but, uh, Unless you're doing it all all the time, yeah, you can you can cause some damage or, or have an issue, and yeah. so it's up to you. A lot of people have 10, 12 reg sets, and it makes sense for them too. So you just never know. Jason Lewis is wondering if you have any. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed one there. Tracy uh, is wondering if you can make a custom harness and fishbowl helmet for her dog. You never know. Yeah, that might be the the future of diving right there. And take your dog diving with you. Tracy, you show us that you need that, and we will figure out how to make it for you, okay? You you show me the demand that you have. Get your dog doing something awesome, and we will figure out how to make it for you. That is not I'm pretty sure I saw something on Facebook about that, so they must, somebody's already doing it. Yeah, it's it's there, but we will put a Dive Right sticker on it even for you. Um, Jason is wondering if you have any plans on a new reg coming out, or if you're thinking about bringing one out. So we have, um, we do have something in the works. I can say that um, new second stage with a little bit uh, different design. So um, we do have something in the works. So look out for something later on this year. All right, as we keep scrolling up here, blah blah blah. If you want to, I've got my uh, handy dandy um, sliding D ring. Oh, there it is. Yeah, let's get back to the sliding D ring you guys are asking. Yeah, yeah, bring that up into play. Look at that. It's a sliding D-ring. And when you actually are putting tension on it or pulling with a, a tank, it doesn't, doesn't go. But if it's straight up and down, then it can slide. So that's how it works. It's pretty basic. Now, who came up with that idea? Um, that was uh, probably one of our either uh, Daniel, our engineer, or, or um, somebody around here, one of the the guys that's always just sitting around thinking of stuff. <laughs> Tracy is wondering when you're going to come up and go diving with him again. You know, you guys came up a couple years ago, you and your father, and we dove in Lake Michigan, and Tracy, uh, his wife, and uh, a couple other people joined us. And 
He wants to do it again, Tracy. I think that's a great idea. What do you, what do you, what do you say, Jared? I know. I think we were talking about uh, hopefully either in June or in August coming up and doing some trimix dives. So hopefully, uh, hopefully soon. Let's do it. We got that new boat that uh, Double Action Dive Charter has got too, so we can go play on that bad boy. Tracy is wondering why anyone would leave Florida to dive in in Michigan, Lake Michigan. So tell us, why would you come up and do that? I think it's awesome. I mean, it's cold. It's really cold, but as long as you're <laughs> As long as you're prepared for it, it's awesome. I love the wrecks, and yeah, you know, we we have all the uh, the caves here in Florida where Tracy spends a lot of her time, and um, and I know that Tracy uh, Click also comes down here and dives with us in the caves a lot. But I do think that the history that you guys have in the Great Lakes is awesome. Even a lot of our readily available um, wrecks in Florida, most of those are artificial reefs that have been sunk over the last twenty something years. They're not real wrecks like what you guys have. So yeah. I, so I'm ready to go out to the Great Lakes anytime. That that being said, what, what, whose side of the camp are you on, Rex or Caves? I'm definitely all about the Caves. So What's all about the Caves. Um, I do love wreck diving. I always try to do at least one good wreck trip a year, uh, if not two. Last year we went um, to Truck Lagoon for a week, which was on my bucket list. Um, and just you know diving the hell out of some cool wrecks but um caves of course have have our heart so it's uh right in our backyard i can be in a cave in 35 minutes so and it's warm there too geez what are we doing here um nathan's wondering what is wrong with cold dark water nothing nathan come dive with us let's do it um marlene is wondering if you have an hp50 to show and do a lot of people buy them Marlene, i have one i don't have it with me but i dive that uh, as well, great light. Um, but Jared, go ahead. Pipe, pipe. Yeah, I don't have an HP 50 um, here with me, but I can show off the EX 35 something. So this is our new light. So this is a uh, the EX 35. A um, little bit different than the HP 50 because it is a hard um, a canister light only, where the HP 50. The big um, draw to it is that it can be either a canister or a handheld light. But um, this is the new EX35 with this cool little push button, red accents. That's a kick ass little light. And it is super bright. I'd hate for you to show it into that camera. Um, I keep on having these elves bring things like HP50s in to me. So it's you can tell that everybody's sitting in their office watching this as we go. <laughs> Well, so there, there, there is the HP fifty right there. Yeah, this is this is a handheld HP fifty. So. Paul is wondering about a possibility of a side mount Optima. Uh, you never know. Um, we're working on our solution to um, side mount rebreathers. We have been for a little bit. Not anything that we're. Uh, ready to launch probably tomorrow or anything, but it's in the back of our head and a constant thing that we're, we're thinking about for sure. Always, always, always optimizing, right? Yeah, for sure. Well, Jared, we are at a little over an hour. Um, we have got a almost 200 comments. That is definitely a record. I think, uh, I think we're kind of tapping out here on the comments and the questions. So I think now's a good time to give away some, uh, a couple yeah, of prizes. Stuff, for sure. Um, so Augie, do you have the randomizer ready? All right, he is going to send me the results for the randomizer. So thank you guys for tuning in. This has been a, another great show. Jared, thanks for joining us. Um, we really appreciate you coming on here. No, I've been uh, happy to be here, and I think that we need to do another one of these soon. And maybe uh, next time we can do it a little bit earlier, I can give you guys a tour of, um, of Dive Right. That way people that can't stop by can actually see what we do around here. Yeah, I, you know what? I think that would be uh, that would be amazing. That'd be really cool. Uh, I'm pretty sure everybody comment if you would like that. Um, but I think that is definitely something we can accomplish and, and get on there. Um, so all of you watching, we appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the comments, the questions. You make my job a lot easier keeping this thing rolling on and everything. Um, and I know people are going to keep talking about those blue fins. Oh, yeah, blue fins. <laughs> but, hey, um, we're really – we will work on it. Everybody thinks that we're just – Pulling their leg, we're it's something we are working on. So right, yeah. So we just need right. to get that that right Pantone color for that um, UK blue just for Chris. So there you go. Now my screen, I don't know why, but it will not allow me to add my 
my screen into it keeps pulling it away for some reason um guys you're gonna have to trust me on this randomizer because i cannot show it for some weird reason jared i'm gonna try to remove you and see if that'll help um stick with me i don't know what is up with the software we use here yeah it's not kicking it guys i uh, apologize we'll bring jared back so you're just going to have to trust me on the randomizer of who wins here. So I've got I another route for you. You're pretty trustworthy. Occasionally. So we are going to give away the CX-1 dive light. And so that'll be number one. So here we go. I don't know if you can hear it beeping away. Joshua Schaus, you won wow. the CX-1. Congratulations, Josh. So now the big bad boy, the, uh, the reg set. Uh, so... Again, thanks everybody for commenting and everything and, and leaving those reviews. We appreciate it. You guys are what this show's done for and everything. So to build up the suspense, there it is. Jared's got it on the screen. This I'm gonna be my best band of white that I can be. There you go. The <laughs> she is much prettier, bro. <laughs> um, so the next one for the reg set. Andrew Etheridge. Congratulations, awesome. Andrew. Awesome. So uh, I can't, I, I've said thank you probably 25 times already. Jared, thanks for coming. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. You know, we'll be back again next Wednesday. So set your timer, join us again. I can't tell you yet who it's going to be, but it's going to be another fun show. And uh, we look forward to talking to you guys all then. Jared, thanks so much for coming thanks. out. Thanks, man. Hopefully we'll do it again soon. Absolutely. We'll see you guys all next week. All right.